Okay, okay. Today we're going to um, derive the Euler-Lagrange uh, calculus of variations uh, equation, um, which is uh, this guy way here down here at the bottom, uh, partial f with respect to y minus a derivative uh, with respect to x of partial of f with respect to y prime equals zero. Now this is the Euler-Lagrange formula, so we're, we're going to do all this work here uh, just to get to this equation, which we use in the calculus of uh, uh, calculus of variations uh, right here. So um, what what the calculus of variations is concerned about is uh, minimizing uh, an, uh, the value of a of an integral that we are given. Now, the first problem we have with uh, an integral, this integral that we're given from a to b, of, of uh, a function, uh, a function that is a um, a function of x, y, and y prime uh, dx. Uh, the first problem with this is that if you want to minimize something in calculus, you want to take the derivative of it, set it equal to zero, and solve for. Um, uh, solve for uh, whatever variable is inside there. The problem with that is that this equation theoretically would have no uh, variables because it goes from a to b. So um, since the integral goes from a to b, um, uh, you know, if it goes from 3 to 4, you do an integral from 3 to 4, that comes out to be a number. So our first problem we have is we need to change this integral to have some sort of variable uh, inside of it. So we're gonna before we attack this, we're gonna have to do a little side uh, uh, side calculation or side uh, analysis, and that's on the other side of this uh, book, which I'm gonna flip for you, and that's right here. And we're gonna actually look at a, a specific example, um, and that example is um, suppose we wanted to find the shortest distance uh, from AC uh, to BD. And uh, we want to know, not the shortest distance, well, yeah, the shortest distance, or or the curve right here um, that gives the shortest value for this line integral, if you will, uh, or you could do the shortest distance, whatever you do, we want to find a perfect, uh, the perfect function uh, that will minimize the value of the integral uh, from AC to BD. Now, in order to do that, um, what we'll have to do is create a function, uh, we'll call him Mr. Z down here, you'll see that in a second, and what Z will be is, it'll be the perfect function plus some constant times um, uh, an, arb uh, an arbitrary function. So let's create this arbitrary function right here. This arbitrary function, it has to have some um, uh, important uh, prints, uh, characteristics, one of which is, um, the function at a has to equal zero. We'll see why that is in a second. And the, they'll call this gamma, this is gamma x is the, this function. And um, the function uh, at b will also have to equal zero. And the reason for that is that we'll make this function like that is that um, when we add um, y uh, plus uh, gamma x, um, since the value at a will be zero, um, this function plus this function, which is what, uh, uh, well, before we do that, let's do this. Um, so here's our, our perfect function y of x. Uh, here's our function gamma of x. But what we need is, we need all possibilities for gamma of x. So we're going to introduce this parameter epsilon right here. Epsilon times gamma x, uh, all that's going to do is uh, stretch it in the y direction. So, but that's going to introduce uh, a variable that we will need uh, to make uh, z as arbitrary as possible. Okay. Now, <laughs> what we're going to do is take this function, epsilon gamma x, and uh, by the way, if you do epsilon gamma of a, it's still going to be equal zero because epsilon is a, is is a constant. So you have this times seven. Seven times this will still be zero. So that's why uh, epsilon times gamma a is still zero, and epsilon times gamma b is still zero right here. And it's these these things we'll need later on to do the integrals. 
Okay, no key. Let's add this function plus this function pictorially. So we're not going to get this smooth curve anymore. When you add a 0 plus C, uh, you'll still get C. That's why we have to make it to be 0 so that the, the endpoints of this function plus this function were still going to be AC and BD. Uh, so this function plus this function is equal to this picture function, just some arbitrary function. And so here I've written it out is that z uh, is equal to uh, yx, uh, that's this function, the perfect function, plus epsilon times gamma x, uh, which is this function right here. And this is our new function, uh, z of x. All right. Now, what we're going to do is... Um, Notice that if epsilon is equal to zero, if this is equal to zero, then z will be the perfect function y of x. We assume this is the perfect function, but we don't know what it is uh, right here. But so, so epsilon will have to equal zero for you to get the perfect function. Now this right here is the function that we're going to insert uh, into our integral. Uh, here we've written z is all possible functions that begin at AC and end at BD, because that's our criteria, is that that has to happen. So there's our Z, and I'm about to take YX plus Epsilon Gamma X, uh, or Z, and plug it into our integral. So let's see what that looks like. This is one of the more difficult lectures uh, that I've given. But it's an interesting one. Okay, so you see how it says x, y, uh, y prime? Well, we're going to take z uh, is equal to y plus epsilon gamma, like I said on the other side. That's where we ended up at there, uh, with epsilon going to be equal to 0. Uh, now, we'll take the derivative of z with respect to epsilon, and if we take the derivative of z with respect to epsilon, we get just gamma. Uh, because uh, if epsilon is like x, uh, x, the derivative of x is 1, 1 times, um, uh, uh, one times um, uh, uh, gamma is gamma. And uh, there is no epsilon on this island, so the derivative of this is 0. So the derivative of z with respect to epsilon is 0 plus gamma, which is this right here. Um, Okie dokie. Now, we'll take... Uh, the derivative now of z with respect to x. So this is z with respect to epsilon. This will be the formula for z with respect to x. Now y has an, is a function of x, so that will be y prime. Uh, e is a constant with respect to x because it's not a function of x, so it's just e epsilon. And gamma is a function of x, so it will be uh, gamma prime right there. All right. So we have z, we have z prime, we have dz uh, d epsilon is gamma, and uh, d z prime, the der now we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to epsilon. Now if we take the derivative of this with respect to epsilon, there's no, uh, there's no uh, epsilon on this island, so that'll be zero, plus, here's an epsilon to the one, so the derivative of epsilon to the one, just like x to the one, is one. So we get one times gamma prime. So dz prime d epsilon equals gamma prime. So we'll have dz d epsilon equals gamma. dz prime d epsilon equals gamma prime. All right. Uh, this is turning pretty abstract, I know. Okay. Let's take our original function, and we'll leave the x alone right there. We'll, in for y, we'll put in z. And in for y prime, we'll put z prime. So we'll have the function written now in terms of z. Now, why did we do that? Again, if we did this, we would have no variable inside. Uh, when we evaluate the integral, we would have no variable inside. And when we tried to take the derivative of i, we'd get 0, always, for any function. So what we want to do is make sure that we have a variable. And we do have a variable in, in this equation. You might say, no, we don't. Yes, we do, because z is a function of epsilon. 
and epsilon will not be evaluated because this is a function of x right here. So these are x equals a and x equals b, but inside z will be epsilon. So if you were to do this integral right here, if you got some uh, arbitrary functions, when you got done with it, you'd have an epsilon inside that equation, and that is a variable you could take a derivative of. All right. So, now that we have an integral with a variable in it, as opposed to an integral without a variable in it, we can take the derivative of this integral, like we said we, we do in calculus, we minimize, we take the derivative and set it equal to zero. So let's take the derivative of this uh, uh, integral, and we'll take the derivative with respect to epsilon, okay, which is the variable in there. Well, the derivative of, uh, we'll bring the derivative inside the integral, the derivative of f, uh, we'll have to take the total derivative. So it's the derivative of f uh, with respect to x, um, and then times the derivative of x with respect to epsilon. But x is not a function of epsilon, so this variable will not have a derivative in the total derivative. Or it'll be zero uh, for the total derivative, so I don't include it. What's the next variable we'll have to do? Well, take the derivative of, partial derivative of f with respect to z. I did that right here. f sub z, the derivative of f with respect to z. And then dz d epsilon. I did times dz d epsilon. That's part of the total derivative of this function. Uh, but d, uh, okay. Plus the derivative of f with respect to the next variable, which is z prime. That's the partial derivative of f with respect to z prime, and then times total derivative dz prime d epsilon. So the derivative of this integral will be this, using a total derivative of uh, the function of f with respect to each of the variables. Okay, we'll have this. And if we look, we say, hey, I know who dz d epsilon is. Oh, thank God I did all this work up over here dz d epsilon is equal to gamma. So take that guy and plug him right into there. And look, I did that. That's what I did right there. There's Mr. Gamma right there. fz and gamma. fz and gamma. Plus fz prime. Do you know who dz prime d epsilon is? Yes, I did that. dz prime d epsilon. After all this work, I did do that, and it's gamma prime. So right here for dz prime d epsilon, put in gamma prime. I did that. All right, so we substitute these two things into this integral, and we got this. All right. By the way, some of the stuff that I uh, we ask you to do in here, uh, you would not know to do. Take a fairly amazing genius, and that's why these guys got their names assigned to this uh, formula. They were very smart to do what they did. But hopefully if we teach you how to do this, uh, uh, you'll be able to do this. So it doesn't follow a normal, it's almost like a chess game. Okay, so that's why I make that comment because of what we're about to do here. Probably very few people would think of doing it. We're going to do, we're going to integrate this. Uh, we'll, we'll integrate this. Well, we're gonna do, we need to now do this integral. So we won't worry about this integral, but we will worry about this integral. And we'll, we notice that this looks like an integration by parts a thing, because parts problem, uh, because of the gamma prime. So some genius said, hey, let's, let me integrate this by parts. So um, you might want to go look at my integration by parts video where I explain the DIS table. I'm going to go through it here, um, but if you want to see a few more examples, you can do that. Um, anyways, uh, this is how I integrate by parts. Um, I put uh, one of the functions, fz prime, in one box, and gamma prime in another box, and I label this dis. D stands for derivative, so take the derivative of this guy with respect to x, so d dx of this guy right here, and i stands for integral, so take the integral with respect to x of gamma prime, uh, the integral of, uh, of gamma prime, of course, is gamma, and S stands for sine, and it always goes plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. It starts with plus always. Again, go look at my, or anybody else's. Well, other people don't do it this way, but 
they all give the same answer. So if you want to see it done this way, go look at my videos. If you want, if you don't understand my videos, go look at somebody else's. But you got to have the you, you'll get the exact same uh, answer no matter which way you decide to do it. It's just I believe my way is a little bit easier. So in my uh, video, I say that the answer to this integral, integration by parts, is v this times this times this that forms a v. This times this times positive is a uh, positive gamma uh, f uh, f uh, z prime right there, and we'll of course evaluate that from a to b. So we'll put an a evaluate from a to b. So that's gamma f f uh, partial derivative of f with respect to z prime. Um, so Integration by parts says the answer to this integral is v plus the integral of bar. Again, go look at my video for integration by parts. I've done several examples of this. Um, so bar is this times this times this. So we'll have to do the integral of gamma, there's gamma, times d dx fz f uh, z prime, uh, d dx, f z prime, and then dx. And we'll have to evaluate that from a uh, to b. Okay? Alrighty. Now, let's see what we got here. Well, I decided to do this right here. I decided to stick b into gamma. So I got gamma b. And then I stuck a into gamma, and I got gamma a. And then f sub z prime is on both islands, so I just factored him out. Now, who's gamma b? Well, if you remember on the other page, I said gamma b was zero. You can go look back in the... I'll show you just for a second. Gamma b was equal to zero, and I'll show you that gamma a was equal to zero. There's gamma b equal to zero, gamma a was equal to zero, right there. So both those guys are equal to zero. That way you don't have to... Rewind the video and lose your place. Okay. So who's gamma B? He's zero. Who's gamma A? He's zero. Zero minus zero is zero. Zero times F Z prime is zero. This guy is going to go away right here. So this person, remember, the integral of this person is this person and this person. And right now we just figured out that this whole island is going away. This guy's going to live, though. And so, uh, notice that we're going to go now to this, uh, back to this integral, and we're going to say, hey, who's the integral of Fz gamma? I don't know who Fz gamma is. So I just left him alone. And then who's this plus, who's this integral? Well, he was these two people, but, um, this person went to zero, and here we have this, and so he is gamma, gamma, uh, d dx, d dx, f z prime, f z prime, uh, dx. So this guy turned out to be just this minus uh, island right here. Okay. Well, remember, we're going to set this, uh, when, we when we minimize a function in calculus, we take the derivative, which we did, and set it equal to zero. And if we set this equal to zero, uh, first of all, we can factor out the gamma right here. And in order for this integral to be equal to zero, uh, either the gamma x has to equal zero, uh, or the fz, uh, or this, uh, these people have to equal zero. So, uh, if these people equal zero, uh, then uh, uh, I think that'll be more interesting than if gamma x equals zero. That doesn't tell us anything about uh, the function, how to minimize the function. Now you may have noticed that I changed this from fz to fy, and uh, d dx, and if fz prime, I change it to fy prime. Why did I do that? Well, remember that before I always said that epsilon had to equal zero to get the perfect function. So in, in the function z, uh, in the function z, if epsilon equals zero, then z just simply turns to y. 
So here, the z right here, if epsilon equals zero right there, then z will just turn into y. And right here, if epsilon equals z, then this will be, z I'm sorry, if epsilon turn is, is equal to zero, then this will zero out, and then z prime will just equal y prime. And so right here, where you have a z prime, if epsilon equals zero, then uh, the z prime will turn into a y prime. That is a y prime. So Euler Lagrange formula uh, for calculus of variations is uh, the partial derivative of the function that you're given inside your integral. So the partial derivative of that function with respect to y minus the derivative with respect to x of the partial derivative of this function uh, with respect to y prime and set that equal to zero and you can solve, uh, you can minimize uh, this integral uh, or find the function y which minimizes uh, this integral which we have done in other, I've done in other lectures of calculus of variation uh, mainly the, uh, you can look up my video on the Brock Stone problem uh, that, that, in that problem I use this formula right here so I just decided in this lecture to um, to, uh, to derive this formula because it's a very important formula. Uh, that was a long lecture. I apologize for its length, but it's a pretty one of the more complicated. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I look forward to any comments you have uh, concerning it. Thank you very much.